All this week, we've been looking back at the impact and the lessons that we learned from Hurricane Bob. How timely is this? Yeah. And now, 30 years later, we're using that information from that storm to better prepare for the next big one. Here's WBZ meteorologist Jacob Wyckoff. We've been given a warning, and we're playing Russian roulette with nature. This former state senator says one of Boston's greatest assets, its waterfront, is quickly turning into the city's biggest threat. The impacts of sea level rise and storm surge are real, and they're here today, and we have to address them. Golden says we need a multi-layered and united defense to preserve Boston and the other 14 communities on the harbor. First, he's proposing a seawall along 175 miles of coastline from Winthrop to Hall to reduce the impacts of the sea, which is currently rising at one to two inches every few years. Inches per year doesn't seem like a lot, um, but it is a lot. That, that affects the infrastructure. You have saltwater flooding. It leads to more erosion, and then we have to do replacing roads and you know, shoring up the infrastructure. Then, Golden wants to build a Seagate system to protect the harbor from future hurricane and nor'easter storm surges. This is the safest harbor on the East Coast because of this wall. It's something New Bedford has already done. Mayor John Mitchell says after direct hits in 1938 and 1954, the city had no choice. The biggest test of the barrier uh, was Hurricane Bob, of course. It, it sort of proved the concept in the sense that there wasn't much damage in New Bedford Harbor, in the Central Harbor. The wall also gives New Bedford a competitive advantage. Offshore wind farm companies have chosen to call this area home, in part because of the security the wall provides. Having this barrier really enables um, our economy to thrive here. And not everyone has the ability or the resources um, to defend themselves from this climate impact. But other leaders say if Boston Harbor gets a seawall, it needs to include all communities on the coast and others impacted by the harbor flooding. For example, the Neponset River, it backs up into parts of Milton during big weather events. I think it would be naive for folks to just think of their community and, and not realize what the impact would be if we all got affected. Uh, it's not a problem that we don't know how to solve. We just have to find the ability and the leadership and the, and the resolution to do it. Golden admits the cost for a project of this scale will be high. But a recent study by Climate Ready Boston found that for every $1 spent on hurricane preparedness and climate change mitigation, it saves $7 in disaster relief and rebuilding. There is a cost to doing nothing, right? There is a huge cost to doing nothing. Hmm. That was Jacob Wyckoff reporting, and we were saying when you think about what was done to create the Back Bay in Boston, mm -hmm. Cape Cod Canal, these massive projects have been undertaken before. They have. We can do it. I mean, the cost is a huge price yeah. tag. Uh, as Jacob points out, you do get a return, but humans aren't always good at paying money to save something later. We kind of like to do things that feel good in the moment, so yeah. it's, it's changing the mindset. And there will be people saying, well, how about the tea? Let's do that first. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's lots of things that need funds, and there's yeah. lots of problems to fix, and this is certainly one that we need to look at. It's a good idea. Fascinating to think about.